Good morning on day number three of the 72 hour sardine fast. So you'd think 72 hours today would be the last day, but actually tomorrow I still have to eat sardines up until 9.30 a.m. Uh, because Dr. Boz says it starts from the time you eat your first tin of sardines to the time you eat your last tin of sardines. So anyways, it's not quite exactly just three full days. There's a little bit more than that. So this morning I'm actually feeling a lot better than I was yesterday. You can hear that my voice is a little bit better, almost back to normal, although I still am a little bit nasally, but I'm feeling so much better. Like you saw on my video from yesterday, my dinner of the crispy sardines with the protein breading on them um, made my ketones dip a little bit down to like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. And um, I was worried about that. I was like, oh man, is that just going to ruin this whole experiment? Adding those, you know, few little things in there, the tartar sauce and the breading. Um, but what I noticed is that my ketones did come back up. And this morning, uh, they were like 1.2, like between 1 and 1.2. And so I was like, okay, that's that's a good sign. It didn't just like knock me back to zero where my ketones never went above that 0.5. So at this point, I'm not quite as worried about those additional items. I also think that my ketones dipping may have just been because that meal was the biggest meal I have eaten in this whole challenge. Um, the previous meals were like 200 calories, 250, maybe 300 at most. And then that dinner was like 650 calories because I had the tartar sauce that had the avocado oil mayo. I had butter, the protein breading added some. I ate more than a whole tin of sardines um, and they were packed in olive oil. So there was a fair amount of fat in that meal and it was just a bigger meal. So that could have been the reason that the, um, the ketones dipped down a little bit but they did come back up. So I'm not thinking it was that big of a deal. Also, I was sitting and editing my video this morning and drinking my coffee with MCT oil powder. I told you that was something that I was continuing to add because that's how I've been enjoying my coffee recently. And I pulled up my SciBio app when I probably had like, you know, an inch of coffee left in my cup. My ketones were like shooting up. I was so, so surprised. Um, they were up to a 1.4 and I just kind of sat there and watched it. Um, you know, as I'm editing, I'm like looking over at the app as it updates because it updates about every five minutes or so. And it just kept going up and up and up all the way to 1.7. Uh, which is the highest I've ever seen on the CKM, higher than even with exogenous ketones. I only got to like uh, 1.4 drinking the exogenous ketone shot. So like I said, my ketones kind of jumped up to that 1.7 and they kind of leveled off. They sat at 1.6 for a while and then they started to come back down. Um, and then I think now they're sitting at around 0.9, which is still very good for me. So I'm thinking that possibly the MCT oil powder is enhancing the ketones, which of course it's supposed to, it's MCT oil powder. I have never noticed uh, MCT oil or MCT oil powder doing that to my ketones. So I'm wondering if it's like a cumulative effect type thing where I have ketones being produced ex in endogenously and then adding the MCT oil powder enhances the ketone production even more. Dr. Boss talks about how ketones beget ketones. And so if you have a lot of ketones in your system, your body is like, I don't know, primed to make more. I'm not sure of all of the details about that, but I'm wondering if there's some kind of effect going on there with the MCT oil powder. So I decided what I'm going to do, um, since it's a few hours later now from that first cup of coffee and I saw the, you know, the spike and then it come back down. I'm going to drink another cup of coffee with MCT oil powder and just keep an eye on it and see if see if I'll have the same kind of effect again. And that'll give me a good idea that it's specifically the MCT oil powder or if it's just my body's natural response to being on day three of the sardine challenge. So I've been doing about 12 grams of the MCT oil powder and that makes my coffee super creamy. I really like it. Um, that is equivalent to about eight and a half grams of MCT oil. So it's not a ton. It's like a teaspoon and a half of oil, um, but it's plenty to make my coffee super creamy. Just whiz it up real quick. It does dissolve pretty easily, so that's nice, especially with the frother. 
This is the brand of MCT oil powder I use, um, the unflavored. Obviously, Perfect Keto has lots of amazing flavored MCT oil powder, but I don't like those in my coffee. I use them for other things. So this is what I buy for unflavored, and it's pretty affordable. It's also organic. And I was turned on to this brand by a subscriber, so it was really nice to get that info. I absolutely love it. My ketones are now sitting at 1.1, so I will... Uh, drink my coffee here. You know, it w I'm not going to guzzle it down. It'll probably take 10 or 15 minutes to drink the coffee and we will see what the ketones do in response. Right before I had the coffee, my ketones were sitting at 1.0 to 1.1, so right around here. And um, you can see that it didn't really change. It got all the way up to a 1.2 but it pretty much just stayed steady. So I can't say for sure if um, the big bump was from the MCT oil powder or if the timing just happened to correlate with when I was having my coffee, but I did stay steady at that 1.0 to 1.2 range, um, which is really good for me. It is 12.40 and I'm getting pretty hungry, so I am going to try something that is a combination of a comment that I got uh, on yesterday's video and Anita, a uh, ketogenic woman, her recipe on um, sardine waffles. Honestly, I saw that video come out and I was like, there's no possible way that I would ever make that. I'm like, good for you for liking it, but I, there's no way I'm going to make that. And then here I am making it. It's so ridiculous. Um, but in that recipe, she did... Um, some eggs in there and I'm gonna skip that because the commenter said that she just mashes the sardines with some butter and then fries them in the dash waffle maker. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm gonna use um, Anita's idea of sprinkling a little bit of the carnivore breading on the um, waffle maker and then sprinkling some on top of the sardine mixture and hopefully that'll give a little bit of a crisp We'll see. So it's kind of an experiment. I um, am going to still use the protein breading, even though I saw my ketones dip a little bit after. Since they came back up, I'm not too concerned about it. And I'm just going to keep it to a minimum. I used a full ounce last time, but I don't think I'm going to need quite that much for these, but we'll see how it turns out. This is the Seasons Boneless Skinless from Costco. I'm going to add some butter, probably a tablespoon probably be good. I also chopped up a little bit of uh, green onions, so I'm going to throw that in. It's about a tablespoon. And then I need to get a seasoning. I'm thinking um, lemon pepper would be good. Redmond Real Salt brand lemon pepper. It's so good. It's like big and chunky. Love that. Gonna get a lot in here. And just give it a mash, and it looks like this might make two or three waffle size pieces. We'll see how it goes. Honestly, it smells like the ocean. Just like the ocean. <laughs> Although I will say, um, I am feeling less nauseous today than I was yesterday thinking about eating sardines. So hopefully, ah, my body is adjusting a little bit. All right, let's see if we can get these a little bit crispy. And we'll get some protein breading. I will link the recipe for this up in the cards. I had some people asking. Um, I have several videos on it and different ways you can use it. It's super versatile. I will spray with some avocado oil. And we'll do a sprinkle on here like that. That was like three grams and this will not expand like other waffle batters so I'll fill it pretty full I guess. I think I'll be able to get two out of this. Okay now I'm gonna add another sprinkle. Do another three grams. So the breading kind of stuck to the top here. Not terrible. I think there's still plenty there. Um, yeah, let's see if I can get this out. Oh, it's holding together just a little bit. Uh, <laughs> maybe I spoke too soon. 
I think I'm gonna have to like pick it up with a pot holder and dump it onto my plate. <laughs> okay, just a little bit of breading on the bottom here as well. Uh, maybe I'll just mix the breading in this time and hopefully it won't have as much stick to the pan or to the waffle maker. I'll put in six grams, same as before. Some of the butter leaked out, which is a bummer. I think it worked better. Well, I should hold my judgment until I get this out of here. I think it held together a little bit better with um, mixing the breading in, and I, a lot of the breading came off of the inside of the waffle maker, so I'm gonna say that's the best way to do it. I am gonna put some horseradish mustard on the side for dipping. And I'm gonna add a lemon wedge just to squeeze over the top. Oops. <laughs> need to do that. All right, time to eat. It is a little bit crispy, so that's pleasant. Mm-hmm. Tastes like a tuna cake. Or salmon cake. No, not bad. The fried fish last night was probably better. Also, with the tartar sauce, it made it really good. Lots of butter. But this is not bad. I could do this. I could do it. Finished. That was fairly enjoyable. Not bad at all. Um, definitely something I would do again. It probably would work better with a little bit of egg in there. Uh, but I did like um, the when the breading was mixed in, it just gave it a really good little bit crispy texture. So if you're trying to find a way to uh, choke down <laughs> or not have to choke down the sardines, it's definitely an option. So I've been keeping all of my sardine stash that is growing um, in my sardine bag. Um, I was out today because I had to take Renee to ballet and I um, went to the store while I was out and found these. Uh, these were actually at Winco yesterday when I was there and when I watched my video, I was like, oh my gosh, those were bristling sardines and uh, I didn't realize it um so I grabbed a couple packs um Anita said they were really good so I am gonna try these um I was trying to decide between like making a soup because I have some like chicken bone broth and some beef bone broth and I could make like a little bit of a soup and I thought the broth would like tone down the sardines a little bit uh, but then I was also considering just putting them in the air fryer and crisping them up um, maybe I'll try crisping them up, and if I can't handle it, I will put them in broth. Oh, I haven't shown you yet. This is my cute NutriSense hoodie. It's so nice. It's like super, super soft. They just sent it to me. I've been wearing it all day, and I absolutely love it. Today, um, it has been rainy and just a little bit cool, so I've been loving having this nice long hoodie, and I love how it like covers my hand like when I have a hoodie I, I want it to cover my hands like that's really important to me about hoodies all right let's see what's in I don't want to get I don't want to get sardine juice on my hoodie though so I'm gonna be careful here oh look at how cute those are obviously they're not really cute because they're sardines but they're small there they are Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this oil. Look at those little fish. What do you think about it? I think it's cool. It's cool? Would you like to try one? Yes, I do. Okay. Well, what are they called? They're called sardines. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had a sardine? Oh, you remember the um, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs? Mm -hmm. They talked about the sardine, what is it, sardine factory or something? Um. You remember that? Sardine. Yeah. There's like sardines were the only thing. The that's biggest yet. sardine in the world. Yeah. The hoop of fire. Which sardine apparently means little fish. So the biggest little fish in the world. Yep. All right. Ooh, these ones have the little tails on the end. <gasps> All right. So I'm gonna put these in the air fryer and uh, crisp them up. We'll see how it goes. While those are crisping up, I'm gonna make some lemon herb butter 
and have it like a dipping sauce. Uh, I thought that sounded kind of good. And I looked through my spice cabinet and what I chose was dill pickle seasoning. This was from Costco. I thought the dill and the onion and all of that would be really good. So we're gonna attempt it. I'm gonna melt the butter. Probably should have melted it before I put the herbs in there for a while. And then I'm just gonna squeeze a lemon wedge in here. And we have lemon, whoops, lemon herb, lemon dill butter sauce. That smells good. The sardines in the air fryer, not so much. Okay, I can tell you they do not smell appetizing. So I was thinking, I'm sure I've seen a uh, dried little tiny fish like this, little fish at Asian markets. I was wondering if anyone that is, you know, sardine obsessed uses those at all. And if you do like how, and if they're good, um, and if, you know, you are from a country that eats sardines like that, I would love to hear how they're prepared. I, I kind of have a feeling they're like stewed. Uh, but that's just a guess. I don't really know. I was thinking, I wonder if carnivore crisps would ever come out with a sardine or some kind of a fish crisp. That would be very interesting. I'm not saying I would enjoy it, but I'd be curious to know it existed. I'm going to go uh, sit down and eat these. I got these pretty crispy, so we'll see how these are. All right, here we are again on the porch eating a meal. So these are pretty crispy and going to have some crunch. Hopefully the flavor will not be too repulsive. Uh, I'm sure like the, the tails are just um, disintegrating, so I'm sure it's fine to eat them, but man, that feels weird. Crunchy sardine chips, the new viral recipe that's going to take TikTok by storm. The dill and the butter hit me first. There's a little bit of a fish taste, but it's not too bad. And again, Freddy is here, ready to take up the gauntlet at any moment. Freddy, do you want one? Here. Yeah. You want it? It's a fish. No? Even Freddy is turning her nose up at it. Oh, man. Here, I'll set it right here for you. There you go. Freddy, <laughs> you're gonna throw it off the porch? Now you know you're on the wrong path when even the cat won't eat the fish. Oh man. Okay, the dill and the lemon and the butter sure make a delicious dip. I'll say that. It is 8 p.m. right now. And I have been hungry. Like my stomach has been empty and growling and I have definitely felt hungry. In this whole 72 hours, I have not gotten to the point where I'm so hungry that sardines sound good. But I've been legitimately hungry. All right, Bubba wants to attack the cats. And we have two cats here right now. I need to open my Waterloo. I've got blackberry lemonade. I'll tell you what, the Element, the coffee, and the Waterloo and other seltzer waters have been like my saving grace on this challenge. Not very good. It's really not very good. But it's not too fishy. There's something about it that's not good. But it's not because it's too fishy. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm really looking forward to eating something different tomorrow. I'm going to have a keto chow. I'm going to have a steak. Maybe some eggs for breakfast after I eat my last sardines. Oh, I was thinking of... Since you have to eat your last sardines at the 72 hour mark or you know wherever you you have to go at least 72 hours whatever you have to end your end your fast with the sardine tin i was thinking maybe i would make um anita's bacon wrapped sardines i thought maybe i could do that for breakfast once i eat those then i'll be home free 
yeah so i just have not gotten to the point of sardines actually sounding appetizing because that's like a trick that people use it's like think of something like sardines or like dry chicken breast and broccoli and if you're not hungry to eat that then you're not really hungry i would have eaten dry chicken breast and broccoli a hundred times over in this um challenge i'll tell you what sardines have not sounded good <laughs> any time all right i think she ate it either that or maple came over and ate it but the fish is gone and the tail is gone she didn't want me to know that she liked it you know she has to play hard to get i think so far my favorite sardines if you can you know apply the word favorite to that kind of thing is the seasons brand the ones i started with from costco because they just taste like tuna to me since they're boneless skinless i thought i liked the bone and skin because I've had those before, like in my paleo days when I tried to eat beef liver, I tried to eat sardines because I tried to eat all the healthy things and try to convince myself that I liked them. But I just did not, I decided I don't care for that. But the, the boneless skinless, they taste like, like tuna to me, which is not really something I am really excited about eating, but I don't, I don't dislike it. You know, it's not, it doesn't turn my stomach. It's not repulsive. So, anyways, maybe I just need more time to get used to these, or it's possible I will never be a sardine person. But I do think there is something magical about eating something you don't really like. And, like, there's something about the sardine fast that makes it magical is the fact that most people don't like them. <laughs> they make you full super fast. It's not something that anyone... I mean, you can tell me if this is not true, but... I cannot imagine anyone binging on sardines unless maybe you were like on the brink of starvation and then someone brought in a tub of sardines and you just went to town. But I don't think I would call that a binge. I think that would be something else. There are a lot of things about the sardine fast that make it, make it do what it does, make it special. And one of them is definitely that this just does not taste good. And I know some of you say you like them and I respect that. But still, even if you like them, do you ever binge on them? That's what I want to know. I was trying to get through all of these so I can eat an entire tin. But I don't think I can do it. I think I will leave the rest for the cats or the dogs. And I have a lot of the butter left. I wish I had something else to dip into that. So I got through a lot. I think I did. I did. I'd have to go back and count how many there were originally. But I got through probably two-thirds or three-fourths of the tin. I'm gonna call that a win for the evening. Hopefully it'll hold me all night long. I am gonna sip on this and uh, call it a night. Are you a good boy? Get it. Yeah, it's a good boy.